One of the, the, the projects that at first I, uh, I didn't understand uh, where they were going and as they've refined the project, the idea of doing mapping uh, at institutions and mapping with intentionality. So mapping using, for instance, uh, those rubrics, those AACNU rubrics that I referred to earlier, um, and perhaps all three of those rubrics, coming up with an idea, an understanding of what it means to have a student or students engaged in global learning, and not only students, but the faculty members and the staff, that everybody in an institution would be in meaningful ways engaged in global learning, and that they're interested in identifying a process by that, that institutions can follow that will allow them to self-examine the extent to which they're fulfilling those various approaches. It's not, what I like about it is it's not an approach that says, here's a list of activities or courses that people need to do or to fulfill. Um, it's based more on the sense that there are certain kinds of learning that can occur in certain kinds of areas through certain kinds of experiences. That's really what they're after. Uh, I think there's real promise in that. That's that's one that has particularly gotten my attention. The things that I'm most about excited about as an outcome from this seminar um, would be the not just the theoretical and the the research that comes about it, but actually the kind of on the ground changes that could potentially happen to teaching and the type of support that we give. Um, institutionally maybe, uh, to how to more effectively prepare faculty to, you know, uh, to guide deep learning in these global experiences, um, students maybe even preparing students to better be able to um, navigate those, uh, I guess be ready for those experiences with, a, with an, um, uh, a knowledge or an understanding of where they might go and where they could potentially go, um, and even some of the pitfalls of saying what might also happen that might not be so wonderful. An important conversation, a recurring conversation, and a, and a theme that weaves throughout that is the extent to which our institutions, faculty, administrators, are taking into account intercultural learning. Uh, our institutions, what I'm hearing here, and, and a growing awareness of this, or in many cases, people came with an awareness, that the kinds of structures that we set up in our institutions, which are designed to help accomplish or achieve or increase the likelihood of certain kinds of student learning, um, are not necessarily connecting well with certain kinds of global learning and among those intercultural learning. and. It's fun working with people and teasing out that a little bit and, and seeing people grappling with and questioning whether things like certification programs uh, um, or other, other kinds of labeled programs uh, with international in the title are in fact necessarily helping students to grow and develop interculturally. That's, that's for me a very exciting part of this. Our group has kind of coalesced on the pre-pre. Um, we have the opportunity of a, of a university circumstance where everyone has to go. So the university has made the commitment that everyone shall go to study abroad. And so, and the, that particular university, it's not mine, um, has a wide uh, variety of students in terms of what you might consider at risk for college success in terms of first generation college student, wide range of SES and um, variables like that. And so we're really curious to know what do you pick? And do those kinds of things, do those sort of demographic factors alone predict it? We're also going to throw in a pre-departure um, self-efficacy for sociocultural adaptation scale. Um, and so we're going to look at, at what you pick, and then we also are going to be able to hopefully be able to get institutional data and some post data to look and see if it changes um, how many global in, globally engaging courses you enroll in later, if it affects rates to graduation, if it affects the graduation rates. But, but I think when we, when we ask about access and is study abroad appropriate for everyone, I think that pre-pre-question is a critical part of the story.
Another project that I think is really promising uh, is a, a more traditional approach in terms of the kind of research that I do, and that is the idea of pre-testing and post-testing students with an eye to understanding to what extent the students are learning interculturally. And they're trying to figure out ways, instead of using uh, one of the, uh, the many um, instruments that are out there for that purpose, they're trying to understand ways, perhaps through examining artifacts, perhaps through seeing the way that students respond to case studies, perhaps through seeing the way that students respond to certain interculturally based activities. They're trying to understand how they might code those activities and that that might speak to the extent to which that student is developed along something like the developmental model of intercultural sensitivity. I think that's really exciting as well. For me, the most exciting part about the outcomes of the seminar would be to see real change at a, at a, not just institutional, but cross-institutional wide to the profession of teaching. I'm accustomed to using the intercultural development inventory in a lot of my research, which is, uh, which is fine, and it's a good thing to do, and I'm, I'm glad that I, I'm able to use it. I'm also really interested, though, in what happens to researchers when they're looking ways for ways not to replace that, but ways to complement that. What are the things we can do qualitatively that will allow us to complement our understanding quantitatively, that, that mixed methodology approach? That's another, that's another one of the projects that I think is really exciting, really promising. We're trying to look at a bigger picture sort of thing. I think a lot of the examination of global learning has been at sort of the course level. And we're looking at much bigger factors here, institution level factors, entire faculty level wide factors. We're looking at bigger picture kinds of issues here at this seminar, and we're looking at the way that those issues actually play together. And I think that's a very exciting way to do it and really can only happen in this multi-institutional context.